Hey, and welcome to the post-apocalyptic garage. Today, on our 10,000 subscriber special episode, we answer your questions. So, the question most of you ask were, what's your names and where are you coming from? So, we are from Austria. And we live in northern part of Styria, on the east end of the Alps. So, my name is Bernd. My name is Hannes. My name actually translates to John pretty good. His name actually translates to nothing. <laughs> it's a typical German name. So, the next question. Um, do you have bagot bags and will you show it to us? Yeah, we have actually a lot of bagot bags from this 80 liter huge one to some small kind of urban bagot bags. But I think this will be a topic for a whole new video. If you're interested in a video about bagot bags, so let us know in the comments below. What's also a commonly asked question was, um, what's your favorite caliber, what's your favorite guns, how many guns do you own? What's yours? So my favorite gun is a Steiermannlicher, caliber 7 by 64 So this rifle is custom made and it's about 60 years old. The wood and also this uh, art of design here, it's, yeah, it's, it's absolutely my favorite gun. So more on that, uh, this special traditional hunting rifle will come in soon on, uh, on a video on our channel. So currently my favorite gun, as most of you know, is my 308 Rook American here. It's a little bit of a different, much more modern approach. It is my favorite gun because in the world we live in currently, this is a rifle which gives me everything I want to have from a firearm. It is suitable for hunting, it is suitable for long range shooting, I can train a lot of it. The caliber 308 Winchester is also widely available, really cheap. So currently this is my favorite gun. So to the next question, what guns and how many guns do we own? <laughs> this is a really difficult question because right now we are owning between about 30 and 35 guns. Maybe, yeah. Approx approximately. <laughs> There has been everything from semi-automatics to pistols to shotguns to your standard hunting rifle. But I think for the question of what caliber do we prefer, it has to be the 22 long rifle. Don't you think so? For sure. Right now we have about 20,000 rounds of 22 long rifle in stock, much more than any other round we have here. And I think when the shit hits the fan, this will be the more versatile round you can have or the, m or the most versatile caliber you can have. So nothing more to say on that. Oh, nice. Our English is really bad, so we have to enhance it a little bit. <laughs> Cheers, brother. <laughs> Cheers, brother. So, the next questions um, we can answer in one. So, what are you guys doing for your living and uh, have you guys served in the military? Actually, uh, what we're doing for a living is right that, what you see on the camera. We work as professional lumberjacks and we have a little farm where we live a pretty much self-sustained life. In our workshop we mostly repair things or machines where there are no more spare parts available for all different kind of guys. And yeah, that is what we're doing for a living. So all the stuff that we're doing right now was formed after our time in the military. and. Why did you begin? So after nine months in the mandatory service in the army, I joined the special forces unit for six years and uh, then I've joined the military police. So my whole career in the army has been eight years and a half. And yeah, I love the army. In this time I served uh, six tours on, on duty abroad uh, in different countries worldwide and right now it's your part. I was actually six years in the military, I uh, also have nine months of mandatory service and joined the LRRP unit. 
The most time we were spending in the mountains and the Alps during reconnaissance missions. And it was a really good time for me, but sometimes you just think that it is time to start a new life. And that's how it was for my part. Especially the learning part of it. Yeah, I think um, that brings us right to another question which was frequently asked where you guys have your skill sets from or where you guys learned. And I think that most of the skills we use today in uh, survival or bushcraft or all of these, we've never been bushcrafters of any kind. We've never taken part in uh, bushcraft events or anything like this. It just all comes from the military. And the engineering part we do in most of our videos is also a skill set you learn in the military where you can make everything out of basically nothing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. That was our life in a nutshell. <laughs> Maybe. But I think uh, very, very important is uh, your learning by doing. Definitely. Another frequently asked question has been what jackets you guys are wearing, uh, which gear you're using. So the most like this jacket or like like his trousers, uh, the most uh, clothing what we're wearing is a uh, standard military issue. Unfortunately, it's not commercially uh, available. At least the most of it, maybe in three or four years or 10 years or 20 years, it will pop up in some army store or surplus store. But right now, most of these things are just uniform parts. So a lot of you guys ask uh, what videos are planned in the future, where are you going after reaching 10,000 subs and so on and so on. And I can tell you we will not specialize in one topic only. So there will be a lot of building videos, a lot of survival related stuff. There will be a few overnighters for sure and I think the biggest project in 2017 is the build of the bug out vehicle. Also in the next spring, we will try to have a series on making electricity out of scrap, basically. Mm -hmm. And what brings me directly to the next question, which is often asked, is our workshop, is it connected to the power grid, or are we self-sustained uh, regarding electricity? And yeah, we have both. So right now, in the videos you see so far, we are connected to the power circuit like any other workshop. Of course. But we can also run our entire shop without the power grid. So we have different generators. We have homemade generators. We have commercially available generators. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff or maybe some kind of room tour to our workshop, as always, let us know in the comments below. And we will also make a video about this. So, another question about uh, future projects are the hunting videos. Of course, we will do also hunting videos, because we are hunters. We are living in a hunting area and we hunt what we eat, or we eat what we hunt. So, especially from May to December we are out for hunt, I think, twice, twice a week. At least. At least. So let's bring it to the point. We want to submit you a feeling how we hunt. That's it. And there's a lot of footage to make and we already have some footage. But when we do a hunting video it has to be specialized. It's a lot of work. We need a lot more footage. So we need a little bit more time for that and take our word, they are coming. Another one of the most frequently asked questions was um, have you guys a bug out camp and what's this area you're living in or you're filming in and why you can shoot here in Austria wherever you want. So we can shoot in Austria wherever we want. We actually have a private shooting range which is approved by the government and all of the area you see in our videos is 100% private property. So no one to complain about that. Do we have bug out camps? Yes, for sure. So basically we're living in a big bug out camp already. The next city is about six miles away and it's really hard to find us. But one of our bug out locations, especially bug out storage locations, is this bunker we are filming right now. It was built about 200 years ago and we use it to store the most of our ammunitions and gear here. We also have a lot of 
hidden storage areas all around the property and also a few bug out camps. We've planned to do a special episode on our bug out infrastructure in the spring so we can reach all of them and not just the ones who are reachable in the winter. So stay tuned for that. So the next question is easy to answer. What have you brought into YouTube? It's easy. It's our life. We're doing those things every day. And right now we just have a camera rolling. <laughs> That's it. That's what? it. <laughs> for sure. Two of you asked us uh, what will be 10 items to bring on History as a Long Show. And one other guy asked us what are the five items we will bring to any kind of show like this. This one is pretty easy to answer. So based on the idea that there are no guns allowed, I will bring for sure an axe, a knife and some device to make myself a fire. So the question about 10 items or 5 items are pretty irrelevant because with an axe, a knife and some kind of way to make a fire, you can survive basically any situation you're thrown in. And I think that also corresponds with our time in the military because there was not only one time where we both were in a training session and have not really more than that three items plus the things we wear on our bodies. And so, for short, that will be the items I bring. Maybe, because <laughs> this is the weapon, <laughs> this is the ammunition. <laughs> the next two questions should be very short and easy to answer. The first one is, what do you think about the clock field knife? And the next one, what's your relationship to Lily? So, the Glock field knife is a piece of shit, and Lily is a pretty nice girl. Nothing more to say on that. <laughs> so, what's the next? I think the next one we will have to answer in a completely separate video. Many of you ask us what about uh, the gun laws in Austria, uh, what kind of paperwork have you got to do to get the guns that we have and to do the shooting that we do. And I think it is definitely too much for one video. So we have to address that in one of our next videos. So I apologize for don't answering your question immediately, but it's really a lot of things to know about and it is really too much for this short little video. Oh, I can taste the English language. <coughs> Did we ever suspect 10,000 subscribers? Definitely not. Definitely not. You're great guys. Thanks for your support. Thank you. So the next question, can you make a video about all your vehicles or outdoor equipment? Of course we can do, we have a lot of vehicles, we have a lot of outdoor equipment, I think uh, one, that, no, no, just one outdoor vehicle you see already in the video, the Jeep, and I think we should do more videos with vehicles, more driving scenes and, and technical details, all that stuff, or outdoor equipment, what you're using for mountaineering, hunting, surviving, all that stuff. So, I think we are not your basic review channel. So, our focus will be, as it always was, on being creative and building stuff outside of the box. But, we definitely want to make some videos of our gear, also of the area we live in and also of our vehicles. And yeah, there are a lot of video ideas on its way. Stay tuned for that. What's coming now? So another question. Will you do more uh, forging projects, forging videos? Yeah, for sure. Uh, but the only reason why I don't have so many forging videos on our channel so far is that I don't want to build 10 knives or 10 axes or what kind, whatever. Because we have already. At first and foremost we want to make new things and really innovative things on our channel and we're not a professional forging channel, we are not a professional knife making channel and we never will be, it's not our intention. So when there is a cool project which involves 
the forge, and there are a lot. <laughs> and you will see it. We will make it for sure, but it will not be a just forging only channel, never. What are the craziest working and non-working inventions or projects you've ever made? What do you think? The craziest project um, would have been worked. I think it have been the rope slide. <laughs> yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. We've built the rope slide uh, Owen Valley, more than 250 meters, and I've built a, a special uh, brake system on the on the steel rope, and I've been really not sure uh, if the brake works, but yeah, still alive. So <laughs> good project. <laughs> I think the craziest non-working invention was my helmet snowmobile. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we've took an old Volkswagen Golf and we've made uh, some tank tracks out of a tractor tire. And yeah, we hit the deep snow and in this moment the whole thing rolled over. Parts are falling off and the axle brakes and <laughs> all kinds of that. So, um, yeah, I think... Um, it was a good idea. Maybe we will try some kind of that in one of our next episodes. But this one, this this one doesn't really work at all. <laughs> we could send it to fail on me. So the next question, where is your favorite camping place? Will you begin? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think our favorite camping place is right here on the property. Right now there's about two meters of snow where it is, so unfortunately we can't get there. But there are definitely be an episode on that where we make an overnight on this place so stay tuned for that as always and it's a really nice place because um, you have an overview of all of our property and also the mountains surrounding us and I think it's also a really good place to calm down and think about things, think about new projects, new videos so that has to be our favorite place. So my favorite place is the whole wood. I love it to be in the woods, I love it to have uh, the big trees around me. It gives me power and uh, calms me down and so the whole area is my favorite camping place. Next question, really easy to answer. Will you make a video about knife throwing? Knife throwing. i just give you one tip, uh, never, never throw your knife. Why would you disarm yourself in a real life situation? One question regarding the overnight uh, what he did with uh, Lily is will you do uh, overnight survival with no tools alone or with Lily? So I know that I can do an overnight uh, without tools or without proper clothing. <laughs> You've seen it in the last one. Will I do it with Lily? For sure. This girl has a pretty badass skill set and yeah, she's a girl, but she will totally handle that, I'm sure. Next one. What does your dad think about your hairstyle? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think this is a question for you. So <laughs> we've promised to answer every question, but uh, well don't know exactly. <laughs> so let's do the next question. What survival technique do you learn from elders or from World War II? I've learned a lot from my granddad because he served in the World War II. We used to spend a lot of time with our granddad in the woods. We learned uh, many stuff and, and many skills to survive. You know, as we've been child, this was just a game for us. But today and right now, you know, you learned stuff for your life. Especially, uh, for example, how to make a fire, uh, how to make your own bow, uh, how to make a spear, um, how to fish with a spear and all that stuff. And yeah, it was funny and we grown up like this. Let's come to the next question. Question for you. Here is one who asks, uh, can you make me one of those doughs? Okay, I think this uh, question is related to one of our last videos and actually it brings me to a whole lot of other questions where you guys ask us if you can buy the projects we made in the garage or anywhere else and short answer, 
not right now, but in the near future. So we are don't planning to do some kind of Patreon accounts or PayPal or something like this uh, for now. But we also have to keep all this running. So our plan is that we are taking our currently existing homepage where we sell stuff like you see on our videos and translate it into English. And so we will have an English and German webpage where you can purchase all of our projects for a really good price. So you have the opportunity to support our channel and our work without just giving money as a present, but actually getting something for it. And I think when we reach about 20,000 subscribers, we'll get this page online. So also the homepage is a lot of work, but of course. we will have it going sooner or later for sure. So the next question going in the same general direction is, can I visit you guys? And I think, yes. Of course. Uh, since 2010, we do in outdoor camps here on our area, on our property. We're making outdoor camps where we teach uh, kids, where we teach uh, grown-ups. Uh, we have uh, companies here for incentives. Uh, we've worked with uh, different sport teams and our plan is to make it a little bit bigger because the demand on it is uh, very high and yeah, let's see what the future will bring. Yeah, and if you ask yourself uh, what are we teaching exactly, so it's not a kind of outdoor camp you see every day. A lot of it is based on a military strategic point of view. And we'll also have to translate our existing web page into English so that all of you can read it and all of you can be part of it. And if any one of you is in Austria, just um, give us a message on Facebook or YouTube. And when we have just the least amount of time, for sure we'll meet up with you guys. So the next one. Are you planning to heat your garage? No, for sure not. For number one, uh, when it's cold like shit in your garage, uh, you get into get used with it, so it doesn't bother you very much. And also, we live in a credo that uh, you have to drain as hard as possible, so that every real life situation that could come will be a lot more friendly and will a lot more better. So, if the shit hits the fan, I can just make a fire and I'll be always warm. Now, or right now, <laughs> I'm cold as fuck, but <laughs> it gets you harder, it's a good training, so no, we're not going to heat our garage. How long have you been doing survivalist practice? And um, are we consider going to other countries like Lily? And do we see more of your brother? I think so. <laughs> Okay, seen more of my brother, he's right here. We give you now about three seconds of time to see him. <laughs> Just three seconds, one, <laughs> two, three. Okay. Um, yeah, how long are we doing survival stuff? Basically, forever. We've learned to build our first bows at the age of five or six, also from our granddad. Oh, yeah. We used to learn spear fishing from him at the same age. Yeah. Approximately. There has been a lot of accidents. Oh yeah. <laughs> We've learned shooting and driving cars at about 10. So the whole thing, uh, growing up in the woods, growing up in the mountains here, in a really wide area where there are no really big cities uh, in the region, learned us the basic stuff you need for survival. So I've said earlier, we are no professional bushcrafters in any mean. But survival for both of us is not to be able to make something with the least amount of tools or the least amount of, of gadgets or gear. Survival for us is to use everything you have on hand to make your life a little bit easier in a bad scenario. And that's also what we are making in every of our videos. So when we use power tools, when we use chainsaws and so on. It shows that we are not the pure survivalists, but we have a little bit of an idea what survival means, so that's it for that. Are we planning to go to other countries? For sure, in future. So right now we've been to Canada, we've been to Sweden, but unfortunately we have no YouTube channel at this time, so we'll definitely go to 
make our trips again. Not the same trips, but trips in these regions. So maybe not in 2017, but for sure in the next few years. So as always, stay tuned for that. Last Facebook question um, is about <laughs> once more about our weapons. So are you guys interested in black powder weapons? Interested, of course, both of us. Uh, we know them, we know how it works, but in the modern world there are not really an application for that, so we don't have one, we don't need one, and we don't train with them. Everything's safe. That was it for our 10,000 sub special. And if we've missed any of your questions, apologize for that. Just remind us in the next videos, we will answer it for sure. For every one of you who've asked us, and it was a lot of guys, when the next episode of our buggered vehicle will come out, so next Wednesday is the time when you're watching the video right now. Today we've built nothing, but we hope the video will be entertaining as well. So stay tuned to our next episodes, let's go for the next 10,000 subscribers. And we'll see us next Wednesday on the next part of our Bugger Vehicle project. Have a good evening, guys. Goodbye. <laughs> Have to sharpen my axe.